Beast Outdoors on this, I guess, nice spring day. First up, we got the RTAC 2. If you watch my first impressions video on this, you should probably know my idea on it, my uh, thoughts. That the sheath, of course, can be, you know, it's, there's much to be desired there. It could be far better, but you can always get your own custom Kydex sheath or leather sheath. Uh... One plus I see about the sheath is that it is molly compatible. But on the sides of my pack, I do not have molly strap, so I just took the compression strap, put it through the belt loop, and then put the other compression strap around the bottom of the knife, and it just stays on there nicely. RTAC 2, here we go. 50, oh, there's beeswax right there. 5160 steel. Eh. 5160 steel, 17 inches overall. Ooh. Almost caught myself on that blade. 5160 steel. Uh, what else? Did I... 17 inches overall, 10 inch blade. Goes from 3 16 inch thick. Tapers down because it is a full flat grind. It's got a little choil there that I have slightly modified to be able to strike a ferro rod with that although I do not use that I have ferro rod with a dedicated striker green micarta scales with a foliage green powder coat on the blade now this was not intended to be a, a carver or really intended to be I guess it's mainly it's a jack of all trades I would say it's a good carver you can definitely split baton wood with this and it's an okay chopper not the best because of that full flat grind doesn't really allow the wood to get chipped out nothing's really pushing it apart except for like the pure wedge that this is uh, I prefer convex grinds for choppers because it's stronger and I, I've just had better experience with it chipping wood out so I've added this lanyard on here so I can adjust it to when I'm in the choil to when I'm choked back on the knife here chopping. Now we've got this massive pine, not really massive but fairly large pine. I believe at the widest point, I'm pretty sure it's like five or six inches thick. Uh, I think it's five. Uh, it's got knots all over it and we have two more pieces of pine which is actually from the top of this tree and we got a piece of oak I think yeah oak that was downed down here in the in the swamp so we're gonna get to test in this behemoth we're not gonna do you know a uh, really extensive test on this because if you wanna see you know hard testing which I'm going to test this hard if you wanna see what I did with it when I first got it over the first few days Go look at my, ooh, oof, ooh, go look at my first impressions video, ugh, it's like a slime fungi. So, first we're going to do, we're going to, uh, actually, we're going to use this as a draw knife. So I'm going to set up the tripod and I'll get back to you guys. Alright, we're all set up here. We're going to get to chopping on this. Get that lanyard on there. Oh wait, I said draw knife. Because of its length, you know, uh, it's not the ideal draw knife, but you can use it as that. It's also not the ideal piece of wood to be doing it on, because I am not actually securing it with anything. This is actually not a good idea. You get it, you can just grab it, draw. Oh, 
you get the idea, right? That's a use that I've actually not used yet, except for actually, you know, I'm now I messed up how this was placed. Oh, oh crap! I hit the tripod again. This thing, I freaking, I threw this thing down the hill. I broke my damn tripod. All right. Holy crap. Everything is moving. Holy crap. Oh my god. Shopping is, like I said, not the not the best. All right, I'm a I'm at the freak. I'm like five seconds away from freaking out here. Am I still getting this in the frame? Yeah. Yeah, not the best chopper. Now, because this was laying on a log. I'm going to have to flip it over. But if you were, you know, chopping it down, you could just walk to the other side. Oh, oh my god. I really embedded it in there. If you had to use this on a human, Or an animal, I feel like, in a self-defense kind of thing. You know, if someone's attacking you with a knife and you just happen to have been EDCing a monstrous R tattoo on that day, you would either scare them off from just the sheer size of this thing, or if you, God forbid, had to use it, You would do some serious damage. Or against an animal, you know. 
in the woods like a uh, coyote or something. That's mainly what we have here is coyotes. So we're not really in too much danger from bears or anything or cougars, mountain lions and stuff. We do have turkeys that have balls though. Like these turkeys, they will they are not afraid of you. They will walk up to you, they will cobble at you, they will they'll do all kinds of stuff. They broke into people's houses when the door they didn't really break in, the doors were open. They just waltzed on in. They waltzed into my cousin's house actually one time. Attacked her. She fought it off with a stool. Oh my god, I don't know how long that was. Too long. But it did it. Right tool for the job, I guess, is what you need. You should probably have an axe or a saw with you. But if this was the only tool you had, definitely get it done. I'm not going to cut that again. Alright. Look at that. That is approximately, I would say, it's a 10 inch blade. I would say that's like seven inches at its widest point and it's soaking wet I don't know if that'll affect it yeah it's definitely like around ten inches I mean not ten inches seven inches nothing the Artac 2 can't handle I don't know if you guys are seeing this alright Got our big ass baton here. Switch it over. How's that? Oh, the swans came closer. Oh my gosh. Not putting enough force behind the handle. I should be. Just jacking my knife up. Nope. Okay. So here it is. So here it is, let's get to the carving and doing finer task abilities of the Ontario Artac 2. Here we are with a carvable piece of wood. Let's baton it down with our hands like savages that we are. Now get up in that choil. Make ridiculously small and unusable feathers. Oh yes, look at that. Beautiful. Paper thin. You guys catching this? Picking up what I'm putting down? Look at that. Do it again. I keep losing them. God damn it. Hey. Alright. We'll try it one final time on a new piece of wood. And we'll go over there. I'll do it up here. I mean, it can feather, 
I'm not a feather sticking pro, but I can feather. Let's make, I did this in my Pack Go Lock video, I really liked it actually. Let's make a, let's make a uh, tent stake. Here's a stick. Hit the tripod like six times, but we're going to use it. Here we go. Now let's get the, uh, let's clean up the top first here. I'm going to have to, I'll take this, use that. Yeah, there we go. Smart. Tripod. Sorry about these loud tripod smacks. No splits. Very good. Because I'm a primitive savage, we're gonna shave all the bark off like this. Actually, let's try a 90 degree spine. There it is. Actually, it's not the best, but it's there. Can you guys, can I see that? You guys can really hear that steel ring. Smell it, it smells like root beer. Mmm. Let's champ for the top here. you should do with all your ten stakes you make out of wood because they will split if you hammer them in and with this you can hammer it in because of how thick it is how big it is now this has a lot of knots in it I would probably not use this for a ten stake in the woods let's do some primitive hits on here some primitive chopping make basically a vampire stake There we go, that would hammer into the ground very nicely. Huh? Yeah, it's been nice. Now let's let's uh, notch it up here. This is I'm gonna try to make a better notch this time. I'm gonna even angle it and stuff. Okay. Got an issue. Kind of split the wood. Alright, well, we kind of split the wood a bit, but we're going to keep going. I made this with the lap lander, it'd be far easier. Let's use the tip for some good fine carving. Oh my, you guys aren't seeing this. Alright, so you could use that, I think. Another thing would go up there, you just hammer it in, kind of at an angle. Don't hit yourself. That'll work. Alright, uh, I did do a spatula in my thingy, my last video. 
Now that I'm going to do that, let's see if I do. UST Spark Force. Swear to God, not the only ferro rod I own. But, honestly, I think it's the best that I own. Alright. As I thought, the spine itself can't get sparks, but the notch can because it's uncoated. Go to the striker here. Oh. My final thoughts and impressions on the knife. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me reset myself here. The blade, very sharp, 6,000 grit, work sharp knife and tool sharpener, slightly convex secondary bevel. You can see the wear on that coating on both sides, that's mainly where I put my stuff to baton. Got wear on the spine on both sides. Uh, you know, my carta gets dirty, easy to clean. My carta scales, I kind of fixed up up here, kind of made it flush with the uh, with the spine, the tang. It it, it works nice. Uh, the coating was like sandpaper. I can almost strike a damn match with it. Just how rough it was, but it got really smooth right here, and it's starting to come off around the edge. Uh, it feels really good once you pick it up and you just kind of let it hang in your hand. It's trying to go forward, which is it really is a chopper. But you know the grind doesn't exactly. It could be far better if it was a saber ground knife. I think it could be way better. So that's that's the Artec 2. I appreciate all your views. I appreciate you, uh, if you would like, share, and subscribe, help grow the channel, I would appreciate that, and I would also love it if you comment, you know, give me some feedback on my video, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and as always, see you next time, I guess, not as always, I say something else sometimes, whatever. Thank you.